in this new video in the game engine series. Now, um, in the previous video, we've been talking about particle engine. So you can see right here on the screen how we have some dust particle, which are kind of you know, you know, passing by and just give some sense of life to the scene. That was the idea of the previous video. In this one, we're gonna be moving forward and start talking about UIs, things like buttons. I have already uploaded a video about this but I wasn't so confident on that one so I thought uh, it, uh, it might be a good idea if I kind of upload a new video on this but this if you're watching this for your first time there is a link in the description below where you will find the whole playlist where I explain how to build this game engine right here on the screen and uh, I also want to invite you guys to go out and support my work on Patreon so let's get started So as I said, we're gonna be talking about UIs now. As you as you probably seen from the from the showcase I uploaded in, I think that was a couple of days ago. You've seen something like this where I kind of have this button where I can click and change the state of my game, and you can see that those button actually has a small animation when you kind of hover over them. This is also important because it gives like a sense that we are actually interacting with this. So when you when you simply have static stuff on the screen, it's like this thing doesn't have light, you know. We kind of want to give light to that. That's why we're using some kind of small animation or you know texture which are changing to just give a sense of light to that. Now um, I'm gonna be starting by showing you how I created this button class and how it's working. Now I didn't want to create a whole um, a whole new system for the UI component. So I'm still using the game object to create my my buttons. Since game ob object are gonna be drawn on the screen and the button is also gonna be drawn on the screen and I also wanna interact with it. So I, I thought to myself, it might be a good idea to simply use it as a base class for my button. So that's why it, it was important for me to kind of inherit from the game object class. Now, as you can see up here, we have this enum boolean, this enum, um, this enumeration um, rather which defines the state of the button you know the button normally has three states the normal states when nothing's going on on it it has the hover state when the mouse is over the button and it also has the press state when you kind of click on the button so that you want to trigger something and kind of have a result so that's why i created this to be able to kind of track the current state of my button and update the texture according to the states you see right now this is the normal state and when i hover you see we have this kind of highlight effect that occurs that's because the state has changed and we kind of update that state to get this texture on the screen and when i click you see uh right now the button disappearing let me go back and kind of click which one this one you see when i click you know the border gets somehow dark and you have this effect like this thing is kind of you know moving so that's that's the reason why we kind of create this this enumeration right here now the constructor is pretty straightforward it takes two param um th three parameters or four whatever yeah four parameters so the first the first uh, two parameters are the position the offset on the screen where you want your button to be on the screen and the third one is going to be the callback function so you want to have this callback because when you click on the button you want something to happen and this is possible by callback function so if you don't know about callback function i'll provide a link in the description below so that you guys could learn more about it but it's pretty straightforward since um, we have pointer for variable for numbers and uh, you know for structure and classes we also have pointer for, for functions so you want to point in the address of a function so that later on you can refer to that address and call that function that's why we call callback function that's the idea about that now we also have this fourth of parameters which is uh, the texture ids of our button so i've been thinking a better way to handle this but for now this is what i came out with and it's working perfectly so why just not stick with it so 
I simply, this is like a vector, you can see right here, I've defined this vector right here, it's a vector of strings. This vector of strings actually takes the texture IDs of my buttons. So the texture for the normal state, for the hover state, and for the pressed state. That's why I want to kind of give this vector right here with those three textures IDs. And I'm going to use the texture IDs to kind of draw my um, button on the screen and you know interact with it and update its state. Since if you remember, if you have been following along, our game object takes the transform class as parameter. So and I didn't want to use that transform class to initialize my button. So what I did is I simply created empty. Oh, I'm sorry, I did something. Let me go back. So I kind of create this um, empty transform object which has a uh, default values so default values means means the position is zero the, the the width and the height are zero and all that kind of stuff so it doesn't have you know that much to offer this is just like a placeholder so i kind of want to hold that place because i have been uh, the blueprint of the game object constructor was meant to have a transform as parameter so and here you can see since this class is inheriting from game object i can kind of use my transform object my transform parameter or member variable which is a member of the game object class so i want to set the the position the x and the y axis with those values right here and my button has this member right here we have the shape the shape is actually you know the 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 area that the button is using you can see right here we have like this this uh, texture right here which is a square and we actually create a rectangle to make sure that we have this area whenever my mouse goes in this rectangle right here then we kind of have this update effect so the shape is there for for that kind of purpose and yeah i think this release actually speak by itself it's it's to make to check if the button was released after a click so that we can update the, the state or call um, our callback function for any kind of action that we might want to have and we have our list you know our texture ids and the callback function so in the constructor right here we kind of initialize those member variables and as you can see i set the texture of my transform to the normal texture so i want to have the normal and since normal is zero it's going to be the first um the first um, texture id from my texture list so you see the texture id is going to be this and yeah it's also important to, for me to kind of um, make sure I set the size of the button. So the button should have the size of the current texture. That's why I call this texture manager query texture. The query texture, all it does is it kind of takes a, a texture and, you know, query, send a query to get the width and the height so that we can know how width and how height is the texture because I didn't want to make that manually so that I would kind of check the size of the texture and put it go and check that would be too much for me so I kind of create this small script which handles that for me so um, I think it's straightforward you already know about SDL and the query texture function but I just want to show you that for one second so that you guys can know what I'm talking about so this is just a simple function like this it takes two pointer so a pointer for the width and the height so you can see i put this out right here because the idea is to write inside of those of these variables so i'm not going to be using this as parameter to make any kind of calculation but instead they are they are they are going to be used like output variables so that's why i put this out right here but this is just something i have written to me it doesn't matter anyway so and we have this query texture right here now when i come back the, the structure what what we actually do is we simply clear what our texture id so you can see right here i have this new uh, method that i call for my vector this shrink to fit um from my previous video i uploaded i had this problem with memory issues since i was kind of you know when i closed the program or when i changed the state it it, it worked but when i do it like three or two or uh, three or four times then the program just gets stuck and I didn't know why so I make some research and I came uh, with this up it's important to always set the size of the of the vector to the to zero so that's something I learned and uh, yeah 
that was also something that was missing in my code and uh, this was just for test purpose so this is not important the clean function is not important for now since I'm not using it now we have this update method right here so we want to kind of know how to update our button we want to know the current state of the button so what we want to get first is the position of the mouse since this button is going to be interacting with the mouse we want to know the position of the mouse that while we call our input instance and get the mouse position now we turn the mouse position into a point so because we have this sdl function called sdl point in rec this function takes two parameters it takes a point an xdl point and uh, um, an xdl rectangle and he check this function checks if this point is inside of this rectangle right here so that's why we kind of give that if the mouse position is currently inside of the shape of our button that means the button is currently hovered so that's why we we check that so we check that and now in here the first thing we check is okay now our mouse our mouse is inside the shape is inside this rectangle right here now we want to check is the left button of the mouse clicked and was the button released this is important because if we don't use this release then you will have this even triggering more time that's why it's important to make sure that the button was released also and we check also is the if is the mouse uh, button left down right now and is the button released if yes then we call our callback function and we set the release to false and also we want to update the texture that's why we say okay the current texture of our uh, of our button is equal to texture IDs and then pressed so the third one the third one actually and down here if we're still inside of our shape and we kind of you know we get the position of the mouse the mouse is not down you can see this um, negation right here don't miss that then we set the release to true and we set the texture to hover if all of if all of this is not you know if we're not inside of that shape that means we're not actually hovering the button nor clicking so that's why we simply set the state to normal so this is how we create our button and you can see if i switch over to my play state now I include the button normally and here you can see how i create my button so if you remember those texture id are handled by the texture manager and my texture manager is going to be passing the texture from my texture.tml file right here so you can see i have this file right here which contains um, everything about um, the texture that i'm using that's why i kind of have this so i kind of pass my uh, my parameters oh i didn't want this let me close this so I kind of pass my parameter you can see right here I have the position is 10 10 on the x and the y axis I have this function right here this method that I written down here you can see I have void play but one thing you have to know about this method is they have to be static if they're not static then you will have some problem with that since those are gonna be callback function and you want to be sure that those things that does not change the memory you know in between or something like that that's why I define them as being static variables you can see static void open menu pause game options so it's important this is a point that you need to make if you don't do this then you're probably gonna be running through some issue now I'm still looking forward to see if there is a way of doing this without using the static you know keyword but I haven't found yet uh, a way of dealing with that I could have you know simply write my function in between here that's also possible by just doing something like this this is how you can define a function and then you put and then i can write my function uh, component in here this is how you can create a callback to function easily but i didn't want to do that because it's going to make things too messy so i think it's better for me to kind of write function beside since it's also going to be you know it can happen that i want to do something before before moving to the next page or the next state that's why I think it's important for me to write these functions right here so this is how I create my button since those button are also uh, game objects so I created another list for them um, in 
where is my data edge so i created this this second list if you remember we had this game object for our game objects like the player and all that kind of stuff i didn't want to mix them in the same uh, list that's why i thought to myself it's better for me to create another list and kind of put them in so object list is just a vector of game objects so if you don't don't be afraid of this type right here i created that type because i didn't want to write std vector game object and all that kind of stuff i kind of create this short name so let me show you this before we move forward into my game right here uh here you see so i defined first the first thing i did was i created this object pointer because I didn't want to write game object with this star right here every time so I created the object pointer and I cut it like this and here I create a vector a, a vector of object pointer so that's simply what is going on there and then I simply create that list and here I can simply push my button in that list and all I have to do now is to draw each object on the screen what I'm currently doing right here for each object inside of this object I want to draw and I do the same thing for the update since the update uh, our button doesn't you know need the delta time to do anything that's why I didn't need to put the delta time I just kind of write zero there to you know as placeholder or something like that and um, yeah so you can see right here in the destructor of this class I kind of call it clear function and I also shrink the size to fit that was important hope you guys are enjoying hope you guys um, like this video if you do uh, don't leave without subscribing without liking and uh, yeah that's all for now see you in the next video ciao